up, up and at him. That's good. I was late. I, I just had an accident, you know, this morning with the car. Oh, no kidding. Mm -hmm. oh, are you all right? No broken bones or anything? No. No? I'm, I'm fine. Sure, all right. Yeah. Well, listen, it's, uh, it's better to dance around the car than on the driver, huh? Right. Right? Yeah. Okay, so don't worry about it. All right, you can uh, make up the time. I won't dock you. You just get to work. Think I'm sexy? Come on, baby. Come on, come let on, let's go. You know. I'll be a couple hours and you eat my passion, bud. I can try. 
could only type. And she just buzzed off from the bus. Yeah, boom, gone. You know, women don't need cars to do that. <laughs> Tough night? Tough morning. Morning, gentlemen. The GAO babbles about the rising cost of gasoline, the rising cost of heating oil, and then they talk about a mild recession, spot energy shortages. Well, those spots are not coming up, guys, which brings us to the key question. How do we tackle our Arizona minerals? The coal and gas there could fuel us into the next century, but uh, do we develop now or sit on Pete, what do you think? Well, frankly, Ted, I don't know what to think. You don't know? Well, there's just such a lot to consider. There's facts, information to digest. But you've always pushed hardest for Arizona mining. Ah, well, absolutely, and I'm still pushing. But you see, the concessions on Indian land, we have to think about the Hopis. I think we should go slow. Boy, you sure sleezed your way out of that one. Time-honored business technique, my boy. Bluffing. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, uh, look, about that accident, I was thinking, uh, this girl works for Firmastat. They're our subsidiary. Couldn't Harbison Insurance cover both of us? They could, but why are you worrying about her? I'm not worried. Oh. Well, maybe I could uh, swing it for you. you know, she'd love you for it. How you doing, Pete? Fine, fine. All right, what's been a, a year? Yeah, and a good one. Record sales. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, so. Yeah, thanks. Well, the last time you were here, you guys gobbled us up. So what do you want this time? You have an employee named Carol Heffernan, haven't you? Yeah. Well, we got into an accident. That was not too bad, huh? I just wanted to tell her that Harveston will cover all the damage, including the deductible. And you came all the way over here for that? Yeah, all the way across the street. No, 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 wait a minute. Any way you look at it, that's a nice thing to do. Well, it's the kind of thing that, that shows employees that bosses are human. Most of them, anyway. <laughs> well, you want me to call her in for you? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, actually, I would. Uh, I'd, I'd like to wait for a break. She, she's kind of behind this morning, and, uh, well, I'll tell her for you, if you don't mind. No, not at all. Thanks. No, it's okay. You gotta get an accident with all the girls. <laughs> all right, you know this way? Yeah, you? I remember. All right. Thanks, Ray. Good to see you. I don't care what he said, he was speeding. Well, he was pretty mad, too. You know who he is? No. Well, he's Pete Dermott. He's the head of development and acquisition over at Harveston. From regional? Yeah, and those guys are something else. I mean, one little thing there on the warpath. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, don't worry about it. I calmed him down. I said, Pete, why don't you let Harveston's insurance cover the damage to both cars, including the deductible? And what did he say? Well, it took some convincing, but he went for it, so those problems are over. Thank you, Mr. Garvey. Okay, all right? We scratch each other's backs here. Huh. Uh, okay, uh, thanks. Uh, I think uh, the end. Lady oh, up I hope that's a double. You. It sure is. Oh, oh, thank you. Mm. Mm. My, my. Oh, oh, that is just beautiful. Thank you. Hello, boys. Oh, right. You want to add up, Pete? Oh, yeah. Before you can sit. Uh, so, did I miss anything? Just the flamenco dancing bears and a small grease fire in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, we're all here, Janice. We're ready to order. Uh, what is the Marine Medley? 
fish. I think I'll have the chef salad. Um, charbroiler, please. I think I'll have the uh, omelette du maison, s'il vous plaît. Heavy on the fromage. Okay. How's your prime rib? Tough. I'll take my chances. I'll have the prime rib too, Janice. Skip the drink. <laughs> Pete, you're not playing the game. I'm not up to contact sports today, boys. Do we have a winner? All I got was an elbow. I got a thigh? I tagged her tail. I got nothing. Oh, what counts more, a thigh or a tail? I say we go to arbitration. Now, wait, 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 wait a minute. It's not over yet. <laughs> Janice, I've lost my napkin. Oh, sorry. You guys just don't have my touch. Hey. Wow. <laughs> By the way, uh, you're all set in the insurance. Oh, thanks a lot, Gordy. Not so fast, pretty boy. I'm supposed to present the uh, quarterly award at Firmistat Monday noon. I can't make it. So no, Pete. No, it's your baby. Firmistat's your baby, Pete. Now, any one of those gals would love to get an award from a leader of tomorrow. They'd love a raise more. Oh, well, they would, huh? They'd love a raise more. Look who's here. Hey. Tina, look who showed up. Hi, Hi. sweetheart. You said you'd meet me at the body shop. Yeah, well, I got to have, so I came over here to wait for you. Where were you when I needed you? Do you know how much that pirate wanted? What are you hollering he about? Wanted for... You're not paying for it. It doesn't matter, Greg. I don't care. It's hey, a rip-off. Hey, stop hollering. Oh, all I can do is holler. Hollering is free. Will you shut up? Now, look, I got hung up at the maritime office. Why are you growing a beard? Because I'm shipping out next week. Does that make you happy? Next week? And the birds, they sing so sweet.
<clears throat> Ritual. Strawberries and champagne, condo and La Jolla, all the perks. <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Don't you? Sometimes. Today I do. I like my life. And I like you. And I like my job. Being a being a part of something. A member of the club? Well, well it's not so difficult. Men are born into the club. <laughs> a female myth. Even men believe it. Do you know what it's like being an Irish kid growing up in an Italian neighborhood? No. No, you don't. So I will tell you. I was always on the outside. In school, uh, at the playground, with the girls. With the girls? <laughs> well, I learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sure did. <laughs> I learned how to get myself on the team. Then teach me. I know you want to be in the think tank, but you just have to be patient. Patient? It's been ten months. Pete, it's not ego. But I have to be heard to be effective. I need to be in your think tank. Don't you think affirmative action warrants a seat in the throne room? Look, you'll be there. Oh, yeah. I hired you because you're a good lawyer. And I knew that you'd do a good job. And you are. <laughs> Gee, and I thought I was just another pretty face. Not just another one. Never. Special presenter, uh, un hombre muy importante. This, this, is, this is Pete Dermott, and uh, he's a honcho over at regional. Thank you, Ray. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm, uh, I'm sorry to be cutting, cutting into your lunch hour, but from what I've heard of the food around here, I might be doing you a favor. So. Uh, now for that magic moment that you've all been waiting for. On behalf of Harvest and West, I'm privileged to confer this quarterly award on the employee who's distinguished for the least number of rejects by the Quality Control Department. That's a hell of a compliment. <laughs> no, no, it is a compliment. And I'm proud to present this quarterly award to Rose Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, uh, let's eat. <laughs> Hello. May I join you? Well, maybe we ought to give free lunches on a day like this. Well, Rose certainly did seem to be the people's choice, didn't she?
Did Ray forget to tell you about the insurance? You know, I fixed it with Harbiston so that they would cover the damage on both cars. You did it? Yes. Um, I thought that uh, he fixed it up. Yeah. You know, I, um, I must have heard him wrong. Do you like your work? I like my job. Listen, I gotta go. Okay, uh, just get those forms in as soon as you can, all right? Everything all right, Pete? Oh, yeah. Fine, fine, man. How do you like that garbage taking all the credit? You know, that guy from regional ain't so bad. Well, at least you could have thanked him. I know it's tough, but you've got to give her more time. Mm-hmm. All right, but don't tell her that. Okay, bye-bye. Why should there be such a big turnover in female personnel at Firmistat? Runs close to 30% a year. Now, they're competitive in salary, so it can't be that. Could be a lot of things. Could be speed-ups, quotas fixed too high, sometimes factory conditions, noise, long hours. Or it could be sexual harassment. Spell it out for me. It ranges from leering to sexual and anatomical wisecracks to saying, I wish you'd wear skirts more often. You have such pretty legs. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I wear skirts more often after you said that. To asking a secretary's advice about new sexual techniques, touching, pinching, cornering behind file cabinets, known everywhere as Grope Alley, to requiring sex favors for raises and promotions. Come on, Pete, can't you spell it out for yourself with one good look around this office? I'm mainly interested in one employee, Ray Garvey. He's the plant manager at Firmistat. Now, would our records show if he's had any previous charges of uh, sexual harassment? They might. But there's a government agency that usually gets this kind of complaint first. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Are you telling me that this kind of horsing around may constitute an actionable offense? If a woman's job is on the line because of it, yes. I can call him if you like. Call. fallacy is believing the marketing department sells things. We don't. We condition people to need things. To? To what? This company and three everyone knows about. Excuse me. Talk to you later, Pete. Ray Garvey has had two complaints lodged against him. Yeah? I don't know. It's pretty vague. Both women withdrew their complaints and uh, both left Firmistat. Not everybody loves the boss. It is conceivable that they use this harassment claim to pin a lousy record on him. It is vague. You want to fill me in on Garvey? Yeah. Well, he took credit for that insurance arrangement that I made. And why was she so afraid to talk about it? And does that have anything to do with the turnover rate? Something's just off. You know, maybe you should get next to this girl. Dig for some answers. Her name is Carol Heffernan. You do it. You know her. Well, you're the AA officer. Carol Heffernan has not come to me for help. I am not going to go looking for trouble when I can't do anything about the trouble I already have. What are you talking about? Do you about? know when I got these cases out to everybody? A couple of days ago. Two weeks ago. Maria Ortiz fired because she has trouble understanding her foreman's English. Henry Willis fed up with racial slurs. Jim Mack in his wheelchair recommended for action, typed, okay, distributed, right, ignored. See. Nothing gets done around here because nobody wants to face it. And that's why they don't want me in those think tank meetings. Oh, come Everybody on, Everybody says, Laura. great, we got an affirmative action officer. Whew, that's taken care of. I have an impressive title and no power. Hello? No power. Bill, I really wanted to talk to you. Wait a minute. All right. I'll get you into the bloody think tank. Hi. 
Hello. I sent in the claim forms. Good. And um, I wanted to tell you, I appreciate what you did. You're welcome. Listen, can I buy you a drink? I think I got married so I wouldn't have to move again. <laughs> Uh, that's my only excuse for picking the wrong guy. You're divorced? Uh-huh. Three years. And how old is your daughter? Oh, she's five. <laughs> Tell me, do executives always ask a whole bunch of questions? I do. Can I ask you one? Sure. Okay. Um, why did you help me? Because of your car. <laughs> what? When I was a kid, my folks ran a motel outside of Pittsburgh. There were always VWs like yours coming in. And they would always give you a quarter when you helped them with the bags. The Cadillac drivers only gave you a nickel. <laughs> right. Does your boss expect a certain performance from his workers? Um, well, how do you mean that? Does he expect any favors? Mr. Dermott, there's a job opening up in quality control. It's a $75 a month raise. Um, I bid for it. I trained for the typing test and I passed it. But I still need Mr. Garvey's okay to get that job. And what does his okay depend on? Quid pro quo? What? Uh, Give something, get something. He's not the greatest guy in the world to work for. It's true, but... <clears throat> and listen, he's a little free with his hands, but it's no big deal. Does he put a price tag on promotions? On raises? Do you have to sleep with him to get a promotion? If you do, I want to know, because maybe I can do something. Do me a favor and just forget about it. See, it, this is nothing that I can't handle myself. I'm going to get that job, and I am not going to sleep with him, okay? You do good work, Hef. Thank you. Be ashamed to lose you. What do you mean? Uh, you stop in to see me after the shift? There's something I gotta talk over with you. Sure thing, Mr. Garvey. All right. I'm gonna get that job. Huh? You're sweating. Okay. Carol Heffernan. Tested highest of all applicants. She's a conscientious worker with outstanding attendance and excellent discipline. And I recommend her highly for this position. Signed, Ray Garvey. Does that sound about right? You can start tomorrow. Congratulations. I can't believe it. Gee, thank you, Mr. Garvey. Oh. Ray. Well. Come on, I'll show you where you're going to be working. Okay. See, uh, have you ever seen Fred Furman's office? Mm-mm. Come on, I'll take a look at this. Called the advantage of owning the place. Oh, yes, it's beautiful. Isn't it? Mm, yeah, it's. Come on, it makes up at home. I, uh, I gotta pick up my kid. Oh, go on, all right. Be all right, come on. Come on. Well,
Well, you know how long I've been here? No. Come on, sit down. I've been here for 11 years. Long time, huh? Mm, yeah. Place is like a home away from home. <laughs> Get that. And I can come in here anytime I want. There you go. All right. To the new quality control inspector. Oh. Well, I think I better, uh, you know, get on my way. Now, what is this, uh, what is this stuff made of? Oh, I don't know. Some synthetic cotton, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I've always liked you, don't you? And, uh, I like you, Mr. Garvey. Ray, you feel good up here. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> get to me. Listen. <laughs> You do. Oh, okay, listen. This this uh, isn't gonna work. Okay? What's that? You and me. This. Okay. I really have to pick up my little girl. Sure. Listen, uh, no hard feelings, right? Oh, no, no, not at all. I, mean, I, I, I just thought that we could have a little fun. You know, no one to get hurt. And I can help you get that job you want so bad. No, I'm not kidding. Please, I don't want to. Oh, I'm sure you do. No. Morning, all. Lila got the job in quality control. She starts training this morning. I didn't get the job. I got this. If he wants you, uh, you don't get anywhere unless you have sex. Some girls go along and some just go. Now, I, I am not gonna do either. Uh, you said that you could do something. Please go ahead. I'll be right there. What, did I do something? No. Tell no, me. you didn't, didn't do anything, Greg. I'm just... You know. Hey. Hey. 
I'm leaving him. I know. I'm not going to see you for three months. I know. What's happening? Nothing's happening. I'm... Don't tell me nothing's happening. What the hell's going on? Nothing. Greg, we... Okay, Greg, I'm sorry. I'll try. You'll try. Don't do me any favors. I can buy that kind of sex. Greg. Sorry to bother you so early. You look like you've been here all night. Well, almost. Uh, listen, we have a problem with the plant manager at Fermistat, a man named Ray Garvey. It seems that he denied a woman employee a better job because she wouldn't sleep with him. <laughs> Why are you coming to me with this? It's harassment, sexual harassment. I assume you're going to explain what that means to us. If the claim was substantiated by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, we could be in trouble. Over 30% of our business is with the government. It could hurt us badly. Well, what do you suggest be done about this situation? Summary execution? I think you should call Fred Furman. It's his plant, his man. Tell him he should do something about Garvey. Take some strong action. Discipline him. Look, I know you take a special interest in Fermis, Dad, because you brought him into the fold, but slow down. Let's take a closer look. Are you absolutely sure the complaint is valid? Yes. I've checked out the girl who's making it. It's legitimate. And I also talked it over with Laura Weston, our affirmative action officer. You know, Ted, she's very good. I think she'd make an excellent addition to the think tank if you thought we needed hey, some fresh ideas. One thing at a time. We never interfere in the internal matters of our subsidiaries. Is this worth scuttling a major harvest in policy? And even if this is something dire, it's not your problem or hers. It's Gordy's. He's had a personnel. Let him handle it. Beauty of the corporate structure is that it works. Talk to Gordy. Mr. Osborne? Come in, Berta. Berta, this is Mr. Dermot, our head of development. How do you do? Hello. Berta's just joined our little family. Your mail, Mr. Osborne, if you're ready. Good girl. Thank you. Yes. So I went to Ted about it, and he said that I should talk to you and that you'd handle it. Okay. I will. Good. This is such a big deal. It could be, yeah. Pete, listen. I work with Ted on all kinds of personnel problems. Uh, lushes, minorities, juggling entire managements like oranges. I know how he thinks. That's why he sent you to me. Ted wants this thing to die a natural death. That's not what he said. Believe me, he was being nice to you. He knew you were being sincere, but this is something those people at Firmistat should handle by themselves. So you're not going to talk to Firm? Not even in a whisper. Look, if you want to kick it around, go ahead. Unofficially. Let me get those, uh, Janice. Now, who ordered the special? Corned beef. Ed. Yes, thank you. And uh, Dennis the fish. Uh... <sighs> thank you again, boys. It's nice having lunch with you every day. And don't give me any of this bull about unofficial. I'm the biggest individual shareholder in this company, and you're a hot shot with the conglomerate that owns the rest of it. <laughs> we couldn't be unofficial if we were stuck in a damn snowdrift together. <laughs> Well, I'd like to talk to you about Ray Garvey. A good man. I'm sure he is. Have you ever known him to pressure the women that were working for him? I'll tell you about Ray Garvey. Five years ago, when I had emphysema so bad I was flat on my back for 11 months, he kept this place open. I'd have gone under without him. <laughs> now, I know what you're talking about. Sure, he gets himself some. He likes a little fun and games. Who doesn't? But it's nothing. 
Ray is a good family man. And what if I could prove to you that he was harassing the harassing? women? Harassing? What's for? all this harassing garbage? Now, don't you get sucked in. Some of those women would have you believe I've got Attila the Hun running my shop. I believe in loyalty up and down. As long as I'm here, he's here. I did, uh, I did drop in on Fred Furman informally. He's very loyal to Garvey. It seems he took the plant through a rough time. He thinks of Garvey as some sort of a hero. Look, I tried. I couldn't do it. I'm going to Arizona on business now. When I get back, maybe... Uh, no, when I get back, I will look into it a no. little... Don't bother. Seems to me we had a couple of girls filed a complaint against him once with the EEOC. Yeah, but can they help? Did you ever try swimming up a waterfall? You might make it, but it's one lousy trip. In fact, I remember those two gals gave up. Well, uh, this um, EE, whatever. Could they get rid of Garvey? Hmm. No, it ain't that easy. There's got to be something I can do, Mr. Delaney. Look, men are always going to do what they do. Now, no factory walls, no union, and no government agency is ever going to stop from trying. Smart girls learn how to keep them cooled down. You get my point? It's after five. Can you come back in the morning? I work in the morning. Can you come in the afternoon? No, I can't. I used my lunch hour today to go to my union. And, and I buck traffic all the way down here. I'm not waiting another day. I came to make a complaint. That wasn't it? I'm Lois McKay. I'm an intake officer. I'll be handling your case. So use my name when you communicate with the office. Now, what's the nature of your complaint? Um, I was promised a better job. And you didn't get it? Right. Uh, because of my boss. He, uh, hassled me. He hassled you? Yes. In what way? Unfair disciplinary action? Verbal abuse? Physical abuse? He wanted to get into my pants. Miss Heffernan, a grievance procedure can take a lot of time. Investigations take months. Sometimes even years. What are you telling me? I'm telling you, if you're not serious about pursuing this complaint, reconsider filing it. Half our harassment cases are withdrawn after we put in a lot of sweat. Now we're understaffed, and we just don't have time to play games. Are you here to take complaints, or aren't you? Carol G. Heffernan. H-E-F-F-E-R-N-A-N. 5747 El Primo Road. Am I going too fast? So we're agreed on that? Right, right. yes, sir. Right. Yes. Then on to Thornier's stuff. Yes, production is still lagging at Kramer Tool. This is the fourth consecutive month. That's trouble, guys. Excuse me, uh... Good girl, what? Group. <laughs> <laughs> so... What about special incentives if we give... No, 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 uh, we tried that. Let's go the other way. Let's penalize workers who... No, Stan, it's a deeper problem. Kramer has a lot of older employees. If we could weed them out by early retirement, the plant could go for youth and speed. But age doesn't necessarily mean bad performance. As a matter Jordy, of fact... we get all kinds of flack with a wholesale purge like that. Especially when lots of companies are stretching the retirement age and finding that... If we increase production, we can handle the flack. I'm not sure that's good for the company image. 
Let's try another tack. Would it be worth it to try spreading the older employees more evenly among the shifts? Let's let uh, Kramer simmer for a while. Let's go on to the Hopi leases. Walk us through the report on your trip, Pete. Well, it's a lot more complicated than just getting to the head of the tribal council, I'll tell you that. Uh, there are the traditional Indians who think that any mining is a, is a rape of Mother Earth. Uh, but I have I put together a little thing here that I think is going to satisfy both factions. Laura. They don't even hear me. Then you've got to fight to be heard, just like everybody else. Well, that's easy if you're a man. You're fighting for your convictions. If you're a woman, you're pushy, you're aggressive. I'm no good at that, Pete. I just withdraw. I have dinner with me tonight. Dinner? You don't hear me either. I hear you. I just think we should discuss it over dinner, and I'll make a couple of steaks, and uh, we'll have some homemade ice cream. No preservatives. Okay. Now turn to the time clock. Pronto. He's been after her all week. You didn't punch in today. I sure did. And where's your card? Well, it should be here. Well, no card, no pay. All right, I will find it. And it's got to be here. Oh, son of a gun. Here it is, right here. I guess you did punch in today. Just get back to work. Oh, by the way, I I got a call from your bank today. About your loan. I have to withdraw my complaint, Miss McKay. I just got my bank loan turned down because of him, my boss. And I got so many payments to make, and I got a kid, she's five. I get no child support from my ex. I don't even know where he is. See, I just cannot risk losing that job. I gotta have the money. The complaint didn't go into the company yet, did it? Notes here. Oh, good. Well, anyway. Saved everybody a lot of hassle pulling out this soon. Right? Right. Right. Thank you. that complaint and I won't change my mind again I promise ah let him fire me it'd be worth it it's against the law for him to fire you while we're investigating he can make you want to quit 
But he can't make me quit. You know, I mean, I've just never been so excited about putting something in motion. Ideally, we get some coal, the Indians get the money and the jobs, and then eventually the land is restored as part of the package, ideally. And Harveston makes a nice profit, for sure. You don't like your presence. <laughs> What's the matter, Laura? What happened to that girl at Firmstadt? Heffernan? Nothing, I'm afraid. Why? Did you want to do something about it? Maybe the new AA officer will. I'm giving my notice tomorrow. Your notice? I'm through belly I can peep. I'm quitting. I mean, if the job does this to you, then it's not worth it anyway. But you're still my old lady. That won't change. Maybe it should. I wonder if we haven't been using each other. Sometimes I think that you wanted me around to be your social conscience. What? Without even knowing it. And I was grateful for all the opportunities that you gave me. But the other night, I lay next to you in bed and wondered if I wasn't paying you off like an honest whore. Oh, God. <sighs> what I owe us now is honesty. Well, thanks. I think you paid me off in full. I'm sorry. Will you at least stay until we can find a decent replacement for you? Sure. Good. Bad enough, you gotta go blabbing to the union. Now it's the government. What are you after? I punched out. I'm off work. Heffernan! Heffernan! 
What do you think the government's gonna do for you, huh? Protect my rights. You can't even handle the rights you got. You want it both ways, all of you. Um, tell him I've got nothing to say to him. She has nothing to say to you. Goodbye. Good morning. Good morning. Phil Kent to see Butch Thomason, please. Would you sign in, please? What a way to start the day. I'll tell him you're here. Oh, don't rush. Take it nice and slow. I always do. Huh? Yeah. Bill can't just see Mr. Thomas. Please do it. Even educated fleas. Come on, Gordy. I've got to finish this. <laughs> and I support your fine effort. You know you're beautiful when you file. Here we see the typical Harveston executive hard at work. What is it, Laura? No. Not directly, anyway. It's women and men. Sex. It's everywhere you look. It's like the office runs on it. People want it, offer it, hold it back, hold it over people's heads. It's like a currency, like dollars. Or gold. that we'd like to say something tonight. When can we do it? That's new business. Not really. Any questions? Do I hear a motion to approve the financial report? Oh, yes. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right, let's hurry it along. It's getting late. Any new business? Hey, 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 fellas, fellas. Sit down, sit down. Oh, oh. State your name. Carol Heffernan. My name is Carol Heffernan. I work at Fermistat. And I um, spoke to Mr. Delaney about this before, and he said to handle it myself. But I couldn't. I can't. So I talked it over with some of the women at work. And we thought, well, we thought what a union's about is helping its members. Will you get to the point? Oh, yes. 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 Right, so the uh, thing is, I filed a complaint with the EEOC. What? Oh, no, Equal Employment Opportunities Commission. Okay. Filed a complaint against my boss, Ray Garvey, for sexual harassment. Hmm? What? Speak up! What? Sexual harassment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, anyway, the day that my boss learned that I had filed this complaint, he followed me out to my car. 
and he hassled me again, and he was yelling, and very... No, look, look, he grabbed me. Where? Yeah, where? Hey, listen, it wasn't a pass. He wanted to hurt me, and he did. I have bruises, and what so can... What are you the... for? Hey, let's see them. I wanted to ask the union to back my complaint. Hey, I worked with Ray Garvey when he was at Roar, and I never saw or heard anything like that. You're not a woman. That's right, sorry. Say that again. Sound great, sir. Getting late. What are we wasting our time for this show? This is our union, too. That's right. All right, all right. Cut out the crosstalk, damn it. You got to ask for the floor. Anyway, we don't have time to talk about that tonight. Then you just listen. Please. This has been going on for years. Since I've been in the union. Since I was 19 and working at a big bakery back east. The boss came to me one day and he said he had let me go. Cutbacks, you know. Well, my husband Joe and me needed the money awful bad. And I pleaded with the boss to, to let me stay. I said, I'll do any job. Well, he said there was one thing I could do. I was a kid, scared, but I did it on flower sacks in the storeroom. It was a couple of months before I got the nerve to tell Joe I was afraid he'd blow up and smack the boss around. I, I was scared he might kill him, but he didn't. He never believed it wasn't my idea. Never. And after a while, we broke up. That was 34 years ago, and it's still going on. That's what she's trying to tell you. I move that this union let Harveston Regional know that we back Carol Heffernan's complaint. I second the motion. Yeah. 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 Listen, listen, listen. Yeah. If you got any real complaint against the Harveston Company, skip regional. Go straight to Park Avenue. They don't like to lose those federal defense contracts. The motion is out of order. Anything dealing with the government has to be submitted to the executive committee before a vote. You didn't tell and me that. I don't that. want to hear any loose talk about government contracts. That's what gets plants shut down. We'd be cutting our own throats. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Favor. Oh. I will. We struck out, so how come I don't feel so bad? Because we didn't strike out. Listen, we're not through with the union. We can always bring them up on charges. And besides, I heard plenty of guys who were for us. There were a lot of no's on that adjournment vote. Sure. We really ought to speak up more. You never know who your friends are. You know what one guy told me? He says, if you make a protest march, I'll put on a dress and walk with you. <laughs> Here's my car. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Nancy. Bye, Nancy. Bye, 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 Bye. Bye. Bye Nan. Yeah. You guys be you careful your way. Oh, that is great. Hey, Carol. You're so quiet. Tired? Thinking. About what? About a letter I'm going to write. To who? Park Avenue. And on top of all that, you're three minutes late today. So were the ten girls behind me. Yeah, well, your workstation is a mess. It is not. You had more rejects than anyone in the whole plant this month. I fixed more rejects, but they weren't mine. Anything else? Yeah, you're fired. And it has nothing to do with you making a stink at the union last night. It's not because you turned a whole bunch of people against me. People I worked with for years before you ever showed up here. It's because you just don't cut it around here. So get out of here. You can't fire me. Not as long as the government is investigating my case. It's against the law. You tell the government to sue me. 
and get your flower and your picture and any other junk that belongs to you and get out. Go on! Okay, please. Carol Heffernan. Yeah. I just got fired. I, uh, I thought you said that that was against the law. I did. But people break laws all the time. Well, it's part of your record now, and we can use it in the hearing. When is the hearing? I'm lining up the earliest possible date. Hmm. I'm sorry, really. But if it makes you feel better, I think we've got a pretty strong case. Okay? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Bye, Miss McKay. What happened? Just more of the same? Don't worry. Okay? Don't worry. You got fired. Carol, what are you doing? You can't fight something big like this. Men run companies. You know that. They don't like women to, to... Why couldn't you just quit when he started bothering you? Why couldn't you just find another place? There is no other place, Mama. There's Garvey's everywhere. Listen, I ignored him. I conned him. I joked with him. I told him the truth. I tried everything. Now, why go through all that again someplace else? I... Mama, I'm tired. <sighs> what about Tina? I'll take care of Tina. Haven't I always? It's just time for me to do something for myself. Do you, do you understand? We'll manage, Mama. We, we, we'll manage. I called you here early today because I was called early today by our friends and colleagues on Park Avenue. I like the view, don't you? You all recognize that building, I trust. That is Fermistat. They employ a young lady there who's apparently been having some difficulties with her supervisor. Well, she didn't get very far with her immediate superiors, so in desperation, she went to the EEOC. She then wrote a letter to our corporate headquarters on Park Avenue, informing them, with all due respect, that we could ultimately have our federal contracts cancelled because of this. So I will simply relay to you the message I received this morning from our chairman of the board. Quote, What in hell are you people doing? Pete, didn't we discuss this? Didn't I tell you to handle it? Uh, Ted, I thought I did exactly as they... got a letter, you didn't handle it. Now I have to handle it. I want to see you in my office later. Frank, the ad campaign for Air Jam is pretentious and dull. Dennis, the plans for the Chemtex addition should be on my desk two days ago. Get them there! Pete? Did you know that Carol Heffernan got fired? No. When? Last week, I think. 
I know how you felt this morning. I guess men can get it in the neck, too. Gordy told me they found a replacement for you. Yeah, I'm breaking them in. My new job starts Monday. Good luck. Thanks. I think I'll like being back in a law firm. so bleak. You've got to admit I was fair. I chewed out everybody. That's my right. And my responsibility. Excuse me. Okay, Bertha. Perfection. I've taught you well, Bertha. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dermott? No, thank you very much. You take it. Oh, no, no. I insist. Oh, well, thank you. Let's just clean this up fast. I called Furman. The old badger won't budge about his plant manager, so we'll transfer the girl. The Garvey fired her last week. After he learned she went to the EEOC. Oh. So how does it go now? Our lawyers listen to what their investigators turn up at a hearing. If it turns out she has a strong case, then we generously agree to talk about settling. If not, then we fight it out in court. When's the hearing? No date set. Don't let it escalate. Offer her a better job at another plant before the hearing. All right, but I don't think she's going to accept it. Why not? Instinct. Hers or yours? Ted, I know the girl. Oh. Huh? No. Not that way. Look, I don't care if you rewrote the Kama Sutra with her, so long as it doesn't interfere with the company's interests. Or with mine. You may as well know, I'm in line for a change of address from Harbor Drive to Park Avenue. And I intend to take you with me, Pete. If you're interested. Oh, I'm interested. So we'd better be able to field something as minor as this. Dave Blodgett will be representing us. Talk to Dave, and then go see the girl. I'll call Blodgett tonight. Just keep your perspective, Pete. And remember, pass. Hey, you didn't touch your drink, Berta. Good. I hate to drink alone. Hmm? Excuse me. Howdy. Remember me? Tex. Right. Tex Landers. You got that car payment handy? I'll just take it and save you the trip. Yeah, I gotta take the car. I lost the key. I gotta do that. Wait, wait, now look. Say I want them home. I can't do that. Give me a week. It's not up to me. Three days. Uh, Ma'am, it's... It, it, uh, no, I can't. It's business. Get off my property or I'll call the police. Ma'am, they're only gonna help me. Now, please, just let me do my job. Hey, oh, Tex, pile my stuff in the carport, huh? Mama, how are we going to get to Grandma's house? We'll just have to find another way, won't we, Tina? Oh, Teen. Tina? Tina? I'm sorry. Teen? That was rotten to me, huh? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I only had one car. It's Pete Dermott. Hello. I heard you got fired. This is Dave Blodgett, an attorney from Harvest. How do you do? May we come in? there, pumpkin. Maybe she smelled the law on you, Dave. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, maybe sit down, Mrs. Heffernan? Oh, thank you. Uh, we might as well get right down to it. Mr. Blodgett agrees that Garvey was out of line, right, Dave? Yes. I understand, Mrs. Heffernan, that you were denied a promotion. To quality control. Exactly. That's why we're here. We want to offer you that job. We have a place for you in the quality control department at Torrey Pines Electronics. It's, uh, it's another Harbiston subsidiary. Where, by the way, the uh, salary levels are higher than Firmistat's. It's a brand new plant with a brand new gym, paddle tennis courts on the roof. Understand the cafeteria food is so good that some people think it should be open to the public. Sounds nice. I'm sure you'd enjoy it there. Yeah, I'm sure I would, if I went. But I'm not. Mrs. Heffernan, what could you possibly hope to gain by going ahead with this procedure? There's the salary I lost, and getting my insurance and pension re reinstated. But you'd get all that. And getting the job in quality control that I was promised at Firmistat. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not in a position to deliver that. Why Firmistat? So that every girl at that plant will know that she can get and keep the job she's earned without having to put out for it. Ms. Heffernan, you're asking for something the law has not been able to guarantee since the dawn of history. Then maybe it's time. Excuse me. Let's go. Feisty, isn't she? I warned you. Well, I just have to tell Ted we couldn't settle here. It'll have to go to hearing. But I'm not worried. No? Not a bit. I think the odds are with us. Oh. Osborne wants to see you. Hey. And just got a few more to see. Uh, talk to you a minute. Yeah, come in here. Well, uh, I know it looks bad for me because because of that trick I did about the insurance, you know. But uh, you're the only guy I can talk to here. See, this Heffernan is off her rocker. I mean it. She's just, just flipped. I, just, I do my job. And I do it good over there. There's not a, a better plant manager in the business. Furman knows that. That's why, that's why he stands by me. He's telling me, for God's sake, why me? Huh? I mean, I got over 100 girls over there working for me. And I tell guys that, and they say, you know, I got my own private harem. But it's just man-woman stuff, Pete. You know, it's the kind of stuff that goes on everywhere. It always has, it always will. And what's the big stink about? What's the government got to do with it? Pete, I got a family. I got a wife and three kids. I never did anything that any guy would have done in my shoes. I swear to God. I've read your final draft of the Hopi Agreement. I'd take you out to lunch to celebrate, but uh, I got plans I can't change. Ted, has Blodgett told you his feelings about the hearing this afternoon? 
Yes, good. He's on top of it. You have reservations about it? I thought we agreed that the girl's demands were out of line. Blodgett agreed. I've always thought her demands were modest and reasonable. I think we should cancel the hearing and settle. Settle how? Lean on Furman to discipline Garvey, and if that doesn't work, get rid of him. Because of one pass? One pass? It was a hell of a lot... It was more than that, Ted. Just take my word for it. Okay. A pinch, a poke, a pat, a whistle. My God, where will it end? It'll be a felony to smile at a girl in an elevator. How many plant managers, how many men and companies all over the map will that affect? What do we do, set up a spy system? To find out who's pinching who, where, when? Ted, this is a serious problem. Serious? Put it next to energy costs and foreign competition. Next to government tinkering and the shrinking dollar. And then tell me what is serious to Harveston. Oh, Pete, forget it. Hey, wait a minute. Listen to me, Pete. I'll only say it once. Never be odd man out in a company town. It can be a terminal disease. Hello? Yes, Bertha. Tell Chris to bring the car around. Something wrong? You look upset. Company business. Do you like working here? Do you like the job? Well, you know, it's a big chance for a girl like me to be working with the top man. And my family's so proud of me. I'm going to lunch now. Can I drop you somewhere? No, thank you. I rode into the countryside. They'd stop for entertainment at a peasant's cottage. They'd eat his food, listen to his music, then choose the fairest daughter and uh, favor her with a, with a royal roll in the hay. To a king, women were for wenching. They had nothing to do with his power or his business. So why should the lords of Harveston Castle be any different? No. So what do you do? Me, I don't do anything. I like living in the castle too much. Dearest Carol, I'm writing you from the Panama Canal as we're being towed through the locks. I just got your letter. I'm sorry, Karen. I'm sorry about how I acted that night, but I'm also sorry you didn't trust me enough to tell me what was going on. You said you were ashamed. What were you ashamed about? You didn't do anything. I don't know if you want to pick up where we left off, but let's grab a pizza when I get back and find out. Say hi to Tina for me. Love, Greg. Tina. What? Greg sends you a hug. And he says hi. He's going to bring him a pennant this year. Oh, man, it's hopeless. He hasn't been a China What are you talking about hopeless? He was 20 and 14 with a losing team last year. Hey, Mr. Wonderful. Hey, you want to hand up? Tell me, please. Janice, we're here now. Come and get it. I say you'll fade. I don't trust pictures with beard. Oh, there's a sound baseball mind. Speaking of games, this one's still open. Score, killer. Over. 
Here, buy yourself another table. Oh, no more. Come on, go. Ten minutes late. Where are they? Sometimes I feel like I don't know you anymore. I don't understand all this. Maybe I never will. Well, anyway, wish me luck. Luck, Mama. I told them that I had intestinal flu. We call that the Garvey Grites. That's it? That's it. Oh, Miss McKenna, hello. Please, my friend, it's Rose Daniel. And, and this is Eileen Montez. Hello, Eileen. I thought I told you they're not calling any witnesses today. Yeah, Carol told us, but you know, we just came along for uh, moral support. Well, you'll have to give it through the wall. It's a closed session. Okay, then, through the wall. Now, I'll call you as soon as the harvest and the trays arrive. Thank you. Come on, sit down. I can't. Relax, you'll be fine. What's he doing here? Uh, may I talk to you? Away from your bodyguards? Where's your pal? Lodge it. He'll be here. For the company. But I came to see you. Why? To tell you that I hope you do well today. You can believe that. I guess I believe it. Thanks. Considering that I offered you my help and then didn't come through with it. Listen, I don't know how this is going to come out today. I... I sure learned one thing. You got to do it yourself. For yourself. But it wouldn't hurt your case, though, to have an affidavit from a Harbiston executive. That'd be the day. A napkin? <laughs> no, uh, open it. You saw it? Every grab, I had a bird's eye view from the window. How about that? How about that? I... Can this... This... Get you fired? That's what I'm gonna find out. Hi, Dave. Now, uh, hold the elevator,
Stay tuned. Next on True Movies 2, Stephen King's The Shining, Part 2. Alternatively on True Movies 1, Mitch Album, Five People You Meet in Heaven. And on True Entertainment, Little House on the Prairie.